Hey, so in today's video, we are going to build this. And what this is, is an espresso tamper. So if you're anything like me, uh, you love coffee, or you know you need it to live. And uh, I start all, all my days with a bit of coffee, and I decided to make one of these for myself. So this is a modular espresso tamper. So the diameter here is defined by the uh, size of the cup that you use. The bit of wood here defines the pressure that's going down on the wood. And this is just a basic handle that I made. So you can press the coffee down and uh, basically have a really good cup of coffee. So we're going to build that together and we're also going to learn about how the component, uh, the new uh, component button works um, and how that really helps to streamline and organize your timeline as you're working. So let's jump right in. Okay, so what we're going to be using primarily over here is the uh, new component button. So I'm going to click on that guy and I'm going to start with an empty component and I'm going to call this base and the parent here is going to be the top assembly that we're working in. And I'm going to make sure that I have activate on because they want to just jump right into that component. So I'm just going to click OK. And then I'm going to go under create and use cylinder. And this is a pretty easy model to make, so we should get through this pretty quickly. So I'm going to start with a 50 mil diameter uh, base and I'm going to make the height of that guy 12. OK. Next, um, I'm just going to repeat the cylinder. And I'm going to click on the top face here and I'm going to pull this one out and make that one uh, 20 mil and pull that up to a height of uh, 12 as well and make sure that that joins. Next I'm just going to make a hole in this guy so that we can put the metal piece in. So I'm going to go down to create and hole and click here. And if you remember, if you grab the little uh, crosshair on the top here, as you move around you'll see this white dot appear. And that white dot is the uh, marking the center of um, the um, the radius. So I'm going to click on that and I'm going to set, oh, uh, set it to 10 which it already is and uh, diameter is at 10. Actually I might make this a little bit deeper so I'm going to go to uh, 13 mil and click OK on that one and that's that first component basically done. So next I'm going to create another component so I'm going to click on new component and uh, this time I'm going to call this one um, base thread and it's actually already highlighted uh, base one as the parent, which is actually what I want to do in this case because that piece is going to be bonded um, to this piece. So I want to make those part of the same component. So I'm going to click OK. And then I'm just going to rotate this a little bit. And you can see that now that you're, um, you're activated and working in another component, that the other objects that, you're, um, that are in your model, in this case the component I built here, they are grayed out. Now you can still interact with them and you can do stuff, but it helps. Um, it's a really nice visual cue to understand what you're working on better. So first up, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to Construct and Offset Plane. I'm going to click on that top face and I'm going to move this down. Um, I'm going to move this down minus 12, which is the depth of the. Um, uh, it's the <clears throat> depth of the hole that I just made. So I'm going to click OK here. And then I'm going to create another cylinder and I'm just going to click on that construction plane there. That's what I want to use here. So I'm just going to pull this one out and this is going to be 10 mil as well. And let's make that a height of um, 25. Okay. So this also needs a thread on it. So I'm going to go to create and then down to thread and click on uh, my object here. Now by default it's going to create a full length thread which is not what I want. So I'm just going to unclick that. Uh, what I want is that thread to match the height um, here. So if I pull this down I can sort of eyeball it but um, an easy way of doing that is if I just click that blue arrow and then I click on that face it's just going to match the threads there. Now um, you can set the designation um, if you know what your um, what tap and die sets you have access to. So in my case, I'm going to be using an M10 by 1. And I'm going to make sure that it's right hand. And I'm actually going to model mine. So I'm going to turn the model on. Now you don't have to turn the model on. Um, I just like it because I think it looks good and I know that my laptop can handle it. But you know, it's it's just it's um, going to have the same effect if you leave it turned off. So I'm just going to click OK. Um, and that's that next component done. So we're going to be blasting through this really quickly. Now I'm going to create another new component. And this one is going to be called Spacer Wood. 
And the parent for this one is actually going to be the top assembly. So I'm just going to hit the X here and then click on this one and hit OK. And you'll see now under um, in our browser, we have uh, base one, which is an assembly, and that um, has the base thread in it. And then up here, we just have our top assembly, which we haven't saved yet, and then a separate component, which is called space of wood. So for space of wood, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create another cylinder, and I'm going to create it on the top of this face here. And so I'm just going to click my origin one more time. And I'm going to make this one a little bit wider. And the reason I want to make this wider is I want to make sure that when um, uh, when I'm when I'm pressing down the coffee grounds in um, inside my espresso cup, what I want to happen there is uh, this piece is going to sit on the outside of that rim to, and that basically defines the pressure that's going down. So I'm going to make this one um, 60 mil, and I'm going to pull this one up. And you can see because we're working on a new component. If we were working just with bodies right now, uh, Fusion would automatically detect that collision there and then assume that you're trying to make a cut. But because it's a new assembly, you're not going to be affected by that. So I'm going to pull this one up and I'm going to bring that to a height of 25. And just click OK. And what I'm going to do at this point now is because we've got a few uh, pieces in here and I can't really see what's happening very well, I'm going to create a section analysis. So I'm going to go to inspect and section analysis and then uh, turn on my origin and click that guy there so now I can see what I'm looking at a little bit better click OK. Um, what I'm going to want to do at this point now is actually uh, shell this before I deal with these um, uh, in interferences happening here so I'm going to go to modify and to shell and click on this face and I'm going to make this 5 mil, and the reason I'm going with 5 is that I know that I'm going to be making this out of wood later on, and I don't want to make it too thin, otherwise when I go to CNC mill this, um, the wood will probably start chipping and it won't look so great. I'm just going to hit OK. And next, um, I'm going to go to Modify, and down to uh, Combine, and make sure that the operation is set to Cut. And my target's going to be this guy. And I'm going to keep the tools as well because I don't want to lose my other stuff. And my tool bodies are going to be this piece and this piece. And just hit OK. And now I'm just going to hide um, base one. And you'll see we've got this little piece left over. It's not a big deal. I'm just going to open up this and just remove that. All right. So. Next, uh, I'm going to create another new component. So we're going to go to New Component. And this one's going to be called Space of Metal. And the parent is Space of Wood, which is good. It's already selected that. And Activate is on, which is exactly what I want. It's going to click OK. And again, we're going to use another cylinder. I'm going to click on that face. And this one's going to match to the inside here. So that's going to be 50 mil. And we're going to pull that guy up. So it's just a little bit taller than the wood, so that's going to be 22 mil to there. And I'm just going to click OK. And then we want to shell this guy too, so I'm going to go to Modify and Shell. Click here. And I'm going to make this 2 mil. OK. So now I need to uh, make that hole as well. So I'm going to turn on uh, the base again. That one. And we're going to go to modify and combine one more time. And this time we're cutting this guy and we're using the same two pieces again. And we want to make sure the keep tools is on. So click OK. And we can turn the base back off again. And we'll be left with that same little artifact. That's fine. We'll just turn in the bodies and we'll just remove that too. All right, so we're nearly actually done with the modeling here. We just got one, uh, one last piece to make. So we're going to go again to New Component. And this one is going to be called Tamper. So this is where all the action is happening. And the parent for this is going to be the top assembly. So we're just going to click there. And I want to activate that because that's what I want to start working on straight away. So click OK. 
and go to cylinder, pick this one, and go to 46 mil, which is the height, uh, which is the internal diameter after we shelled that piece. And we're going to click here, and we want to make it to this height. Um, click OK. I'm going to turn my analysis off at this point now. I don't need that on right now. And I'm just going to rotate around so I can see this a little bit better. And one more, we're going to go to Create and Cylinder. Click on this guy. And I need to match this one to the internal diameter of the, um, the espresso cup that I have. So my one at home is 52 mil. So that's what I'm going to make my one to. Um, so I'm just going to 52. Now the great thing about this is that um, I know that the espresso machine in the office is a different size. So all I'm going to do later on is go into the uh, timeline for this and change the diameter of that piece and then machine another one out. So it'll still work on the same, um, uh, the same mechanism that I built here. I just need to replace this part with another one and then I can just use the same thing. So I'm just going to make that to 52 and make that a height of 2 mil. And click OK. And lastly, I'm just going to hide um, hide the spacer and the wood because I don't need those on right now. What I want to do now is uh, once again shell this. So I'm going to go to modify, shell, shell this guy here. That's going to be another 2 mil shell. And I need to add um, a thread um, or a cylinder on the inside here so that actually threads in. So on this guy here, you can see that I um, have this little bit on the inside. And that basically helps to hold the whole thing together. Um, ideally, you don't want the hole to go through the whole way. But um, I was experimenting when I built this one. This is really just like for demonstration purposes. Uh, you wouldn't really want to use aluminium on uh, coffee or um, anything you're eating. Ideally, you should really make these out of brass. Um, but, you know, for the sake of this, it was a lot of fun to build, so it wasn't a big deal. So I'm just going to go to Create and then to Cylinder again. And we're going to pick that inside face. And I'm going to make this... Uh, Uh, I'm going to make this 16 mil across and then just pull that down and just click that guy and I'm going to click on the bottom face here so that those two match and then I'm just going to make it a couple mil shorter so I'm going to make that 18 and hit OK. Next um, I'm going to put another hole in this one which is going to be 10 mil and click on that face there and pull that to the center again. So I want my diameter here to be 10 and my depth is going to be 10. But the last thing I want to do here is the tip angle. So currently you can see that my tip angle is pointed, which um, is simulating what would happen if I drilled the hole. But I know that when I go to do this, I'm actually going to bore the hole um, with the machine. So I'm going to end up with a flat bottom there. Um, so instead, uh, what I'm going to do is change that tip angle to 180, and that'll flatten it out. You can see I've got a nice flat hole there. Just click OK. And then lastly, what I want to do is thread this so the whole thing comes together nicely. So go to thread, click on this guy, and that's going to be 10 mil. But the designation needs to be 10 by 1 so it matches. And that's right hand as well because I used right hand on the other piece. And just hit OK. And now um, I can bring all my pieces together. And let's turn that one on. And I just have to turn on my space method. OK. So now if I go to my top assembly, you can see that um, I've got a really nicely organized timeline. So um, this is an alternative method to building versus, say, doing it with um, just working with bodies and then going 
converting things to components afterwards. There's actually nothing wrong with that. You'll end up with an, um, a color organized timeline the same way that I have here. And if I just hit N on my keyboard, um, you can see the colored components uh, that I have. But it's um, the benefit of working this way is that it, it helps you create a really, really nicely organized timeline as you're building. So if I go back to Tamper again and like activate that component, you'll see that my timeline at the bottom here is isolated to the elements that are specific to uh, that component. Uh, and this means that when I'm making changes or I need to edit anything, um, it's going to make life a lot easier for me. And again, the same thing, you can see the other bits are faded out and I can't see them. And um, it's also hiding those bits from the timeline. So you've got some parity happening here. All right. Um, Lastly, I think I'm just going to uh, do a quick render of that one and drop some materials on that. So I'm going to make this um, out of cherry wood because that's what I used um, when I built my one for real. So I'll just put that there and down here. And I'm just going to hide those two for a minute. Um, Gonna make this piece out of brass. And we wanna make this piece out of brass. And we wanna make this piece out of brass. All right, I'm gonna set that to render and I'll see you guys in a minute. All right, there we go. We've got a pretty nice render of the object there. Um, I hope you found this video helpful. Uh, I'm just going to jump back again to my timeline and just show you that one more time just to recap. So we have a timeline down here. Everything's color coded. Um, I can click to activate components. And when I activate components, you can see that my timeline is isolated. Um, the objects that I'm not working on are, um, are dimmed out and they're now transparent. Um, my timeline is only showing me the objects that are relevant to what I'm working on. If I go back to the top assembly and activate that one, you'll see that I can see the whole timeline the same way that I'd be doing if I was just working with bodies. Um, and then I can uh, basically have a much more organized timeline uh, and get the most out of um, parametric modeling. So with that, thank you very much. Hey guys, hope you liked that video. Um, you can find me on Twitter here. Um, I post a lot about Fusion, things I'm getting up to, where I'm running workshops. Um, so hopefully see you at one of my workshops sometime soon.